What's up, you guys? Welcome to the PMS podcast show in beautiful mid-city, by century city. We got bubbles. We got lots of things. We got a great actor on here today. We also got, um, I don't want to say, but some wild shit's going down today. And we also have a beautiful guest band. It's going to be cool. So welcome um, to the PMS podcast show. All right, guys. We got Merv. We got my friend Greg, who's the producer, Booker. I, you booked some fucking serious guests on this trip Yeah, here. it's a very exciting show. We have Jamie Kennedy. We have Ezra Miller's band, yeah. uh, 100 in the Hand. Yeah, 100 in the yeah. Hand. We have Ghosts. It's and we got Penis great. in the Hand here. Do you have a lot of penises in you? That's not, that's not true. <laughs> Both hands. Both hands. No, you don't like No, I never, I never, Nicole, give it up for Nicole Tran, my beautiful... <laughs> My beautiful co-host, I never asked you, do you have a boyfriend? No. What's up with that? I, I'm waiting for blue eye white guys of Blondie. <laughs> he never show up. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> right no, here, because I, I hear that when you look at Tony, because you like him because he's, right? I like, I, I have, I like white guys, blue eyes. That's my thing. <laughs> oh, a white yeah, guy with an Asian girl. I've never seen that before. <laughs> Yeah, and then and then Bill lives in Pasadena now, Bill. Yeah, well, it's actually South Pasadena, but it's a great neighborhood. Is there a Cheesecake Factory? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that yeah that's good. Love that place. And a lot of people don't know uh, that, that Bill also, he plays the guitar in church every Sunday. Can you play some church music for us right now, please? Oh, certainly. Uh, Jesus is coming home. Praise Jesus. He's worshiping the Please devil, it sounds like. put your hands in the air for Jesus Christ coming. All right, give it up for Bill DeGilio. Yeah. Merv, how's the, how's the store been? Are you still at the front bar at the store? The store's doing great. We're cruising summertime, you know? Yeah. People there at the party, a lot of tourists, a lot of fun, a lot of scantily clothed patrons. Uh -huh. Got it like that. Not enough people fucking across the street, though. Not the, much people, why? The hotel across the street, great view of the windows. Mm. Not enough people fucking in those Aww. windows anymore. They used yeah. to have Last a lot. Last year, a lot of people fucking in those windows. This year, right. hasn't started yet. Right. <laughs> that's Yeah, that's cool. And then who do you... So you're bisexual, correct? I'm all over the place, man. It's Hollywood. Yeah, are you a, are you a they or are you a she or a I'm he? A he I'm, a, I'm a white he, him, the most boring. Right. <laughs> but you're a furry, right? I just am furry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We got a very big show here. We got, we got a big, very, very big show here. People at home, I know you're salivating and you're excited. Uh, my good friend Jamie Kennedy is here. You want to tell us a little bit about Jamie Kennedy? Uh, I know you know Jamie Kennedy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's been around f through the thick and thin. Yeah. Like, uh, the Jamie Kennedy experience was one of the first like prank shows that really fucked people up. Yes. Uh, I mean, Malibu's was one of him and Swartzen. Yeah. Like, crush, crushing that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, like, what hasn't? Yeah, yeah, so Jamie he will got be here. Killed, he got killed in Scream. Yes, <laughs> yes. So ja Jamie will be here in a second. We got Jay, Jay Wesley, Wesley, and he's uh, Ghost Hunters. Wow. Ghost Hunters. And then Ezra Miller. Ezra Miller is also here. He's in a band that they're going to be promoting pretty heavy called 100 in the Hand. He's been in a lot of different bands, but he's going to be here. He was also, I think, one of the stars of Flash. Yep. Right? Flash yeah. we'll of being that. a wallflower, yeah. a Harry Potter. Uh, Fantastic yeah. Beast. Yo, you guys, it's really important that you make your lover feel good. And the way you make your lover feel good is obviously Blue Chew. The good part about Blue Chew is you don't swallow it, you chew it. 
And the best part about it is it shows up to your house discreetly, so you don't have to, like, people don't have to know about it. It just shows up and you order it. You just take it and it's good and it makes everyone very happy. So definitely take the Blue Chew. And I just wanted to take a moment to tell everyone that it's been working for me and Buck. All right, guys, without further ado, my good friend from back in the day, we work a lot of funny bones together all over America. Keep it going for Jamie Kennedy. Jamie yeah, Kennedy. Jamie. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I'm sorry. Is that organic? <laughs> here, you're, you're over here, my man. You're right here. Yeah. So, thank <laughs> Polly's like, oh, we're just going to talk about a couple of things. You didn't tell me you were going to shoot me with putty, dude. <laughs> <laughs> So what do you think this is like? You, you, you're stepping into an acid trip. Yeah. Dude, I love it. And it's perfectly you. Yeah. Like, this is perfect because you have many facets to your personality. <laughs> so you should be jamming and being able to flow yeah, and do around, some yeah. yoga and then talk yeah. and, you know. So, it, it, you and know. And shoot it, putty at people. So, <laughs> it was funny. You know what this place needs? Another dog. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> Fuck it. You're doing shows at the SPCA now? <laughs> this is We're hey, waiting for <laughs> There's a lot of dogs here. Yeah. Jesus <laughs> Christ. Dogs got parking. I don't. Hey, Jamie, you look like those guys should be cast in the, um, uh, like in the cops guy at the beach. Hey, so is she taking a shot? I don't know. Is that? <laughs> no, I've been asking so. for subtitles for Nicole since we started, but... <laughs> <laughs> so let's go down memory lane. So let's do it. for me, for me, a lot of people know me from the movie Encino Man. Yeah. And a lot of people know you from Malibu's Most Wanted. Yeah. And like, so when I'm with you at Comic Con and we're next to, we're signing, signing, uh, a lot of people have the poster. Can we put it up, please? Yeah. This is from Malibu's Most Wanted. Can you explain this? Yeah. This was she, wasn't Fax the writer or Fax? Fax and Adam. We about to have some hardcore drama go down right about now. That's yeah, what I'm talking yeah. about. Oh, we get ours. Huh. That's my crib. It ain't much, but yeah. it's all I got. You want me to narrate it? Yeah, just yeah. Well, I mean, basically, you know, I'll talk. You can watch a little bit about it, but basically, it's you know, it's all about the life in the boo. It's hard out there. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. People come up all on your private beach. Yes. So so Adam so Adam and uh, Fax were the writers of Son in Law. Yes. And they also wrote this. So what year was this? I got okay, I had a great story. So this was two thousand and two. We shot it. Came out in two thousand and three, April eighteenth, two thousand and three. And I was in acting class and I remember that I believe it's Gina was the co star son in law. Oh, Carla Cagina. Carla Cagina, yes. Okay, I it. apologize, Carla. And she would come in for classes sometime, and she was the star of that movie wow. along with you. And wow. I was like, you're getting to work with Polly mm. in this amazing comedy. Mm. Like, dude. And then I, nine years later, I make my own, because I think that came out in 1993, yeah, yeah, or yeah, 10 yeah. years later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So do people come up to you all the time and like, yo, dude, they have you do quotes from that shit? Because people scream wheezing the juice to me all the fucking time. All the time. I mean, we sit next to each other. Uh, there's a thing called Comic Cons. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Comic Cons. Nicole, you can explain to them what Comic Cons are. Comic Con là cái gì đâu có hiểu gì đâu đâu biết trời chăng đâu. Dude, the, the, speaking <laughs> Vietnamese, bro. <laughs> 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 no, okay, so here it is. So I met you. Yeah. Kill to Tony. Show. Yeah. Uh, you. You're very funny. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I know on Blue Eye White guys. <laughs> 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 She's like a live action Yelp. <laughs> <laughs> she likes. Um, dude. So this is part of our life right now. We're in our 50s. Yeah. Right? Here's we're in our 50s. This is where we're at. People appreciate nostalgia. Here, here's the deal, bro. It's a big deal. My two senses. Yeah. It's Comic Cons used to be a place where it was a dirty little secret and you would call it the mm. Boulevard of Broken Dreams. Mm. If somebody killed you and I spit in your grave four. You know what I mean? And you were like a corpse. You'd go make a couple G's at mm. the Burbank Marriott 
and you would be paid. There's a, a Burbank Marriott Comic Con. Let me write that down. <laughs> <laughs> who who books Sorry. it? So 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 anyway, it, once 2016 happened, I remember seeing Jeremy Renner at one, mm. and I always think Jeremy Renner is ahead of the curve. Mm. He was a guy that bought a lot of houses and flipped them, and he's and it became a humongous business. Mm. And um, now it's bigger than ever. But Dude, you and I, crazy. it's manna from heaven. And what I'm saying is because the entertainment business is so different now, there's that dog. And we, it's like them coming out to see us is like we're living mm. museum pieces. I don't mean that in a diss. Mm. People want to experience mm. us in mm. the flesh. Mm. And, and it's, dude, it's because VHSs are coming back, vinyls coming back. Mm. I'm not saying it's going to go mainstream again, but well, people yeah, want. I was, yeah, I was talking to, not to drop names, but I was talking to Vince Neil. Okay. Uh, the lead singer of, of Motley Crue, um, and I was talking about his them touring right now mm -hmm. and how it's bigger. Motley Crue is bigger now than it was back in the 90s because the nostalgia. They're playing stadiums. Wow. They're playing stadiums like Dodger Stadium type shit. Back in the 90s, they were playing like the Forum. Wow. So they're playing bigger places. And you look at guys like, I don't know, fuck, every fucking band. They're all <laughs> bigger now than before. So the stuff we did touched people's hearts. And now people after COVID and all this censorship and cancel culture and COVID and all this fucking shit, we got hit with a curveball. America, the world got hit with a curveball, yeah. and they realized the shit that we did really touched their hearts. So oh. I've known you. I've known you for a, a long, long time. Yes. A long, long time. Long Probably time. At least twenty years. Twenty five. Yeah. Twenty five, thirty. Years. Yeah. I did a show that he, Jamie Jamie Kennedy. A lot of people don't, might not remember. He had one of the most cutting edge fucking hidden camera shows. That was on Fox, right? Was it uh, on WB. Oh, WB. But it was WB. close, but thanks, buddy. Appreciate it. I loved your show on VH1. It was MTV, uh, it was, bro. It was, it was fucking MTV, dude. Oh, my bad. Let's play a clip from MTV. <laughs> <laughs> all right, anyways. <laughs> anyways. Uh, all right, so the Jamie Kennedy exper experiment. Yes. So how did you come up with that? What or was you that about? Or you would say the Jamie Kennedy experiment. Excrement. All right. Experiment. <laughs> So let's play it. Let's play a little bit of it and explain what this is. Yeah. For this you got piece, it. Um, we got some help from comedian right Paulie here. Shore. Now tonight, right here. Paulie's helping us set up this woman, Retha, an aspiring. So do you want to just now watch it? Because she's going to be auditioning for yeah, a, we're watching for a new it. show. Okay. What Retha doesn't know is that she'll be auditioning for me. Yeah. So I play Prince Abdullah Aziz. This was Aziz. fucking hilarious. What I am dude. is I'm a man. Wait, can you pause as I narrate it? Come so right now I'm playing a Saudi Arabian prince, but right now that's a felony. <laughs> okay, you're, you're you're looking at a crime. It's an actor acting. So I'm wearing a prosthetic nose. As much as a good actor I think I am, I can't make my nose bigger. And um, some Saudi Arabians have noses like that, but that's illegal to say. All right. So That's okay. So got this real was quiet again. <laughs> so this was a hidden camera show. Tell the people what it's about. Yeah. So wait, 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 pause. Listen, wait here. We're my movie too. Right. Oh, so it'll be quick. You'll be in and out. Should have worn my cleavage. So you got your stuff. I'm gonna introduce you. Oh, okay. It's kind of weird because. It's so Pauly basically let us use the story. It's amazing. I said, please co-star with me. He did it. And he's. this is kind of one of our darker pranks. And yeah. you co-signed it. Yeah. Where basically a Saudi Arabian prince is looking for personal comedians to be his gestures. And they're going to give him a great life. Will you come to Saudi Arabia? And in order to do that, Pauly gave them a shot but because he's financing Pauly's movie. So Pauly basically made people who were very broke and destitute think they were going to live in Saudi Arabia. And wasn't Holtzman on this? Holtzman was on this. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. So look at, she's scared, right? No, so p time should out. I, should I like? No. <laughs> Shine it up? No, do not look in his eyes when you do that. Only three okay. times. Now, okay, so feet. pause it again. So we, we could watch the whole thing with six minutes, but because you, you have to let it play out, but let's just tell you what's going on. One of the things to get the job is in Saudi Arabian culture, they like uh, people to wash the prince's feet. And so yeah. every comedian had to wash their feet. And it was if you washed his feet, you would also move up in the pecking order. Now, again, this is a black woman washing a white man playing a Saudi Arabian's feet. Again, a felony. Yeah. Okay. Romeo and Juliet. Yeah. So let's incredible. talk about that shit. Incredible. So he was. So Jamie, again, he's been doing this for as long as I've done it. You had. No, you're longer. Dude, Adam Sandler, remote, remote control. Oh. And then you. 
I'm totally Pauly. That was the first two comics I ever saw on MTV. And Jay Moore, shout out you three. You trailblaze. Uh, 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 you trailblaze. And the late and the late great uh, Ken Ober. Yeah, God bless Fuck. him. God bless yeah, him. He was great. But you did a movie. Well, this was a great movie with Leo. It's called uh, Romeo and Juliet. Do you bite your thumb at me, sir? Yeah. Uh, uh, music uh, for this part. Uh, 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 I bite no, my. Play, play music. Is the law of our eye? Is the law of our side? If I say I. No, yes, sir. No. I do bite my thumb at you, sir. But I do not bite my thumb at you, sir. You quarrel, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I do quarrel, sir. But I serve a better man than thee. You lie, sir. <laughs> And that's how it starts. Wow. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's how. Can we start shooting? Trời ơi, hai đứa này gây lộn đùng đùng mà mọi người đang lắng nghe mà làm Greg, 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 Greg sweaty oh. comments. Greg, sweaty comments. What? 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 Greg, sweaty comments. Holy! So, what was it like working with Leo on this? That's fucking well, crazy. Dude, incredible, bro. Right. I mean, like he was before he became. That's not your photo. Let's put up his that photo. That is my photo. Oh, let me see. It's my hair is pink. Let me see. MGK oh, before. Oh, Wait, let me oh, watch it. Let me watch it. This was a great film. Is that you? Oh, there it is. I will bite my thumb at them, which is a disgrace to them if they bear it. Huh? <laughs> What a great film. Who directed this? Baz Luhrmann. Baz Luhrmann. Wow. Baz Luhrmann. I mean, I mean this, did you have to learn Shakespeare and that type of shit? Yeah, it was. How was that? Did he say <laughs> learn Shakespeare and take a shit? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I. it was incredible, dude, because we had to learn to read the script, break down the script, and then know what those words meant then. And so we said it now. It's like, hey, Holmes. Like, what's up, dude? How you feeling, bro? And it's like, I serve your, my man is better than you. It's like, yo, that's, that's my bro. You know what I mean? Like, mm. so it's just, as long as we said it in the cadence of you and I talking, mm. but with those words, that was his vision. And mm. he pulled it off brilliantly. And Leo, you know, he's a, not just a generational star. He's a Mount Rushmore Hollywood. I believe yeah. Leo is a, you know, one of the biggest movie stars that ever lived for sure. Like top, top echelon. And he was about to blow up. I remember. because he was getting a lot of love. And I remember on this movie that he got Titanic. Wow. I remember he told yeah. people, he was like, I just did go and do this movie called Titanic. Fuck. And it was like a big thing because he was such a dramatically yeah. great actor, but he was like yeah. doing this big action movie. And he, I mean, that's the right. He's a great director. And then, and then also when it comes to uh, when you first started acting, you're from Philly. Right, and when you first started acting, you couldn't get any acting work, so you you posed or you you pretended to be someone. Was yeah, that? I used to. Um, I'll try to keep this brief, but I worked on La Brea next to the strip club. What's that called? Uh, Not seven crazy girls. Yes. Of course he knows. Or <laughs> Seventh Veil. Vale. Crazy girls might be around the corner. Seventh Veil's on Sunset. Okay. Uh, so you couldn't get any. So you couldn't get any. So I couldn't get any job. So I worked as a telemarketer, and next to that strip club, everybody worked. Wanna be porn stars, musicians, trying to be actors, comedians, and I basically got really good at selling toner. Now, for everybody who's here, toner is the ink that you use for your copy machines. Now, I guys, I know you don't know what a copy machine is, but it was something. For we would, yeah, we would take and put ink in it to copy something and then read it and print it out. Does that, does, yeah, do like people fact, know what those facts, are? People, hard facts. copy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. hard copy. Uh, so I sold this stuff and I got good at it. And then I made up a character because on stand up I was doing characters and voices. And uh, I basically created a guy named Marty Power. Mm. And he would call because you have to compare yourself to people. So this is going to be a reference. I don't know if it's going to work. But you compare yourself. So you compare the toner, and you would say, this is better than Canon or whatever, or the toner. So I compare myself. I said, I got a kid here who's a cross between Robbie Benson and James Woods. Mm. Only Paulie will get that reference. <laughs> but basically, it was a lovable guy with edge. Robbie Benson, what a fucking great actor. Ice right? Castles, Running Brave. He's yeah. done am amazing movies. So basically, God, he was great. Yeah, so I had to lie. I did a whole voice. It's hard to get to the... Uh, yeah, I kind of talk like this. I'm trying to get it deeper. 
and uh, I, I would call, and I would say, I got a kid. I'm going to Naples. So I told everybody that I was retiring to Naples, mm. and will you meet the kid? And I got a bunch of agents. Wow. Meetings. And that's how you got in there? I lied. And what was your first thing that you got? Uh, dude, I got an El Pollo Loco test commercial. Mm. The t- commercial did not run, but they liked me, and I auditioned for Vans. And your show was either on or just ending, and you were going to movies. And I had long hair, mm. and I wasn't you, but I was uh, did three commercials for Vans, and it ran on the summer of '94 on mm. MTV. Oh, wow. And so from there, I got meetings with TV people. Wow. So I got a commercial. So agent. you wheezed in there on the van thing. Yes. You got that. From Marty, your, your fake voice agent, yes. got you the van commercial? Yeah. Marty, my fake voice agent, got me a meeting with the agent. The agent then took me on. Oh, wow. I then met. Oh, with, there it is right there. Yes. That's oh, my that's van sick. commercial. He's a chick. So you had paved the way. So at that time. Get the picture? Yeah. That's I was hilarious. basically. That commercial was. Um, uh, me holding a van sneaker where I filmed in Orange County at the vans mm. um, where they make vans. And uh, this was a picture, and it was a chick. And I said, this is a van, this is a chick. And then I rub it all over, get the picture. Wear the vans, get the chicks. That's great. Awesome talking work? to everybody. Yeah. Did, it just, uh, yeah. Did it work? Get, wear the vans, everybody. Get the chicks. Yeah. Yeah. Jam in the van. And then, yes. yeah. <laughs> and then what? And then what's up with what's up with? We all know. It's Matt, illegal now. We all know Matt Rife is one of the hottest comedians in the world. You did a movie with him that yes. never w- came out. No, dude, it oh, did, did come, it come out. out. Why? You, well, you said no one saw it. Don't be it hating. Don't suck. Um, That's hilarious. This is a movie called Don't Suck. Okay. And it's uh, how do you find it? It's on Amazon Prime, dude. Oh. Jeez. <laughs> do you buy kitchenware? No, I just I, <laughs> no, I want I want to promote it. I want to promote. Just click on. Oh, this is hilarious. You see people bomb. This kid next levels it. I am a vampire. I'm neither Team Edward or Team Jacob. I rooted for the sun. He was so scary. He scared the laughs away. I saw you in the back. Oh yeah, I was the guy who laughed. Thank you for that. You ever this needed good. an opener? What's up? I have a commitment for you to open up the brand new Russell Peterson. This is great. A one's going to be appointed for you. If you take me, and I will pay for every expense. What do you say? All right. Guy has a friggin' coffin. He's a good guy, and you can learn a thing or two. Like what? How to hang upside down? I once joined a doomsday cult, by the time I got there, everybody was dead. Ned? Will you quit the vampire routine? It's not a routine. I mean, the glowing eyes, contacts, the teeth. It's an odd lifestyle choice, but hey, it's Vegas. But dude, you turned into a bag! Dude, you're amazing. What'd you find this kid? Only fangs. Uh. <laughs> Aren't you there for your job? <laughs> this is great. Oh, okay, cut, <laughs> cut, cut. <laughs> so so this, this is great. You guys, come on. Can <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's cute. <laughs> Here's no, it's, it doesn't. Can if I it, tell it you? looked like it, if it looked like I would watch that stone. Well, like, that's a good movie, dude. It's a movie that you and I would make. Yeah. You know, Harlan would make Tom Green that they don't make anymore. That was six hundred thousand dollar budget. Um, and it's basically a movie about a comedian who goes on the road. and This guy begs him to be his opener. And then he slowly realizes that his opener is a vampire. That's great. Now, it sounds really stupid on paper, right? But it becomes great because Matt is absolutely perfect. He's fucking amazing in the movie. And I play a grizzled comedian that never um, really totally made it. And the movie is about a guy who opens for me and then blows up. And now it's a documentary. (laughs) (laughs) Hello. Is everybody here? Is Adderall not given to the staff? (laughs) We got Ezra Miller coming, dude. Oh, yeah. He's fucking wild. Yeah. He's span hundred in the hand. Polly, don't forget about uh, talking about jizz, 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 jizz off. Here, where's the jizz off? Jizz off. So here's, here's a bottle here. Yeah. Is this, is this for the f- cleaning up the eyeglasses? No. Eyeglasses. Basically, this was a product that I came up with with these two women, and they basically they. They say that jizz is a bad term. It's not. It's 
schmegma, it's schmutz, it's dirt, it's grease, it's oil, and you should use this. And anyone here, this is not a rough jizz. This is a oil, beautiful, naturally based jizz off, and it's good for your skin. Remember during the pandemic how your hands would dry out? So this is a nice oily jizz. Give it up for Jamie Kennedy's oily oh, jizz. So yeah. this is for this is like my best customers right here. Is there yes. actual jizz in it? No, that's illegal. But oh. the Culver City, <laughs> the Culver City Whole Foods. Did you hear about that guy? That he was doing it in smoothies. Oh, he was pouring it in smoothies. No, he would go the in the back and they'd ask for bee pollen. He left it in, and the, one day a girl goes. Um, this is weird. And they bust her because she knew it. And there was another guy in the Fairfax Whole Foods, be careful, ladies, that was dropping hot ones on the back. Yeah, you know what's fucking crazy about that? I don't know if Look, you saw. Bring that up. Yo, Pull I don't know that up. Saw, yo, I don't know <laughs> if you saw the, uh, I mean, basically talking about the whole gist thing, there's a documentary on Netflix called A Man Who Has, has a Thousand Kids. Yeah, Nick Cannon. The man who has a thousand children, kids, he's been spreading his semen everywhere. I don't know if you mean a, He's a super donor. But hold on. Do you mean like, like through sperm banks? Sperm banks? Yes. But he's oh. a super donor, a million kids. I mean, that's a lot. I mean, I know you've been very fortunate in your private life. Even a thousand women would be a lot. Yeah, it would be a lot. But so, you know. This this thing right here, I don't know if you saw on, on Netflix. It's, it's, it's a man that has a thousand kids. Have you heard about this? No. You haven't? Listen. We wanted to have a family together. A sperm donor is making up 50% of your child. I got to know him on the internet. He has curly hair. We really hope that our kids have his hair. We were totally sold. I'm ready to have beautiful babies. Nine months later, I had a baby boy. But that wonderment was totally ripped from us. She said, your donor is quite famous. This guy is a serial donor. Have you heard about this guy? No. So he's so basically putting a lot of sperm out. Out there, yeah. So his fucking kid lives here in L.A. And you he's mean, doing the same fucking thing. And that's him right here, Hans. How fucking crazy is that shit? No way. Yeah, dude. This is... This... Yeah, this is... No way! Yeah, this kid... No, for real, this No kid, way! This kid's dad Wait. is the fucking guy, so he's... I yeah. thought he... I thought the <laughs> guy was black. No, that's the guy that jizz in Whole Foods. <laughs> oh. Allegedly. No, tell us about your dad and shit. Is that true? Up. Yes, so... Is that true? Yes. So, I... I was actually a donor baby. Mm. My father, uh, he gave, he didn't give birth to me, but he, my surrogate mother was in the Netherlands. And then we moved to the US when I was a young boy. Mm. And I haven't, I haven't watched the documentary, yeah. by the way. Yeah. I, I don't talk to my father much anymore. Yeah. But, um, well, how can you? 998 <laughs> others are trying to talk to him. <laughs> it's true. His phone line's always busy. Yeah. <laughs> it, but, but you say. Han, Hans, we'll do the goddamn joke. Sorry, it's my Wait, first podcast. This, no, stop no, it. No, he's interning here, and he and we he's find incredible. Out, I yeah, watched he's the band in the van promos. I'm like, who's this handsome young buck? And he tells me all about bands. I don't know. I'm dead yeah. serious. I see your promos. I think you're killing it. Yeah. Thank you. So thank he's, you. Yeah. So he's part of that whole. But wait, this is dude. Stop. You you, you drop <laughs> bombs and you just move on. Like, let's take a minute. Fuck the time. Lock the doors. This is insanity. I know. That's what this I was telling you. This is fucking insanity. This, you are a product of a sperm donor. She's still painting, by the way. This is nuts. <laughs> hold on. So, hold on. Do you know your dad at all? I've, I talked to, last time I talked to my dad was maybe three years ago. Mm. Do you know your mother? Yes, of course. My mother raised me. In America. Uh, we moved to America when I was seven. You still have an accent. A little bit, yeah. Well, I was born in Netherlands, so. I know, but you still have an accent. What are you trying to say? How old are you? I'm 24. I would think you'd be like, what's up, homie? Yeah, no. Like, look, you still no, have a Netherlands but in you. Oh, that's neither here nor there. But you know how my dad, you know how my, you know how I took after my dad, the late, great Sammy Shore? Yes. You know, I became a comedian. Yes. Well, can you tell us what you're doing now? And I'm not fucking kidding. This is crazy shit. Yeah, so I, I, I spend a lot of time going to clubs, doing comedy, but 
Um, the main way I make money mm. is I've actually I've been donating to some local clinics. Yeah, so he's doing the but sperm it's okay. thing too. Yes. How many kids do you have? You have? Oh, no. How many kids oh, no. do you have? She clapped a little too hard. <laughs> Wait a second. How many kids do you have? Tell them. I have I have four or five right now. I think I'm gonna stop maybe when I get to ten or fifteen. <laughs> I don't want to be like my father, cause my father in the in the film, yeah. from what I saw, they say about a thousand. Yeah. Then real numbers near to like three thousand. Yeah. Oh my god. Yes. So like father like son, fucking wild. Interview this guy. Hold I'm not like my, I don't like my father. I not Hold like my father. Hold on. I know. Wait a minute. Why did you start doing this? Is it good money? It will. I think. I think I have a good seed. You yeah, know, I think uh, I've good. I've good genetics. A lot of yeah. girls see your photo, and what do they say? Handsome. They they say good things. They say yeah. good things, and sometimes they want my sperm. Yeah, and sometimes but you have sex with them, and sometimes you give it in a cup. Uh, sure. Right. Uh, we, yes. So the four kids were they conceived through the cup or through the actual sex? Uh, three, three cup, one woman. Mm. <laughs> Dude, I just. Is this a bit? It is a bit. Hans. It is a because I feel you like could, in the hallway you were production with Blue Chew. Oh, you, you could make this is a bit. Kids. I don't need. Is this a I bit? Don't need it. Let's give it up for <laughs> Let's give it up for Hundred in the Hand, Ezra Miller's oh, band, oh. and Jay Wisely. Come <laughs> out, guys. <laughs> I would get up, but I have all my talking points on my legs. I don't want to fuck this up. Yeah. Thank you guys for being here. Thanks for having us. Say what's up. These are my friends, Jamie, Nicole, everybody's here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Hi, guys. How are you? Hi. 100 in the hand. Give it up for 100 in the hand. Thank you. Ezra, I know I, you, I've, I've researched you. You were in a lot of other bands, but this your new band? Can you I've researched us? you, too. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I was a baby in the 90s. <laughs> so this is, like, amazing, beautiful right. for me. Big fan. <laughs> Big fan you. of you both. Thank you so Deep much. Deep infancy memories recurring to me now. Thank you. Right. See, he's in the sperm documentary, too. <laughs> yes. Uh, hey, it so, all comes hey, together. So tell us about your band. This is Tokata and, of course, Jay. So 100 in the hand, tell us about it. Uh, we're, we're a new band. Uh, we're gonna play, they're going to play later, too. So we're going to talk to them now. They're also going to play. So go on. We're going to play, and uh, we're hoping that everyone will engage in very strange, sort of interpretive, maybe somewhat modern dancing when we play. That's cool. Interpretive, Whoa. that's like a conspiracy theory with the jizz off. What you're saying? Why? Because you guys do conspiracy together. Oh, so we interpret, we interpret the jizz? Or there's a conspiracy Interpret of dancing. interpretive dancers. I mean, in like Suspiria sense, yeah. Yeah. If we're doing some like witchcraft dance moves. It, wait, you're in conspiracy, oh, yeah. and you're in conspiracy, right? I'm in a conspiracy. <laughs> Meaning you're into it. <laughs> we all are in a conspiracy. Thank you. Here's what you didn't talk about. My whole thing is there's many things you can talk about, but do you see more satanic symbols in the world more than ever? Oh, all the time. Thank you. It's definitely on a rise. Well, we did a documentary a few years ago called Demon House. Yeah. And we actually found out that the Vatican has issued more exorcisms than they mm. have ever in the mm. past few years. Well. Like, it's actually on a rise. Hot time, hot time. Well, we're, we're yes. going to get that. Well, we're crazy. We're going to get that to a little. I really want to <laughs> push your band 100 in the hand. Give it 100 in the hand. Yeah. Yes. What's that mean? So, so tell us, yeah, tell us about 100. Oh, can we yeah. play the video? Connect 100 the in the hand is the name of the sperm documentary? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey. In the tube. Oh, here it is. Here it is. No, Bro, no, stop be nice. being funnier than be us. Be nice, you guys. Come on. Yeah. Stop sh being that funny. Sh sh Man is chaos, lone baby, burn out westward home. Yeah. I beg you, miss. Mary Billy Eilish, right? Little Billy Eilish? Sure. I mean, don't. He, she's great. I mean, we we she's love Billy Eilish. I mean, she's Eilish. amazing. This is Tokata. She's the yes. singer of 100 and a Hand Please Hello, Tell Hello, everyone. Very I beautiful. Am Tokata. Um, and yeah, 100 in the Hand is actually, I think it's formerly known as the Fetterman Massacre. It, it happened in, I think, fuck, Nebraska. Mm. Anyway, the reason that the band is called that is because 
the story involves like a queer native medicine person. Mm. And so Crazy Horse, the story is that Crazy Horse, this famous native like war chief, um, he took a band of like, you know, probably like 15 to 20 men and there had the Cheyenne had just survived a massacre, right? So the cavalry had taken out like, I don't know, a couple hundred unarmed <laughs> women and children, mostly. And the Lakota were allies. So I'm Oglala Lakota and Hunkbapa. I'm from Standing Rock and um, the Pine Ridge Indian Reservations, which are in North and South Dakota. Mm. Um, and Crazy Horse and his, his men, they go to this medicine person and they say, you know, we are looking to retaliate and we understand that we're outnumbered. They go back and forth with this medicine person, bringing offerings again and again, um, starting, you know, the medicine person is like, I can give you 50 in the hand. You know, he's like using like dead, dead guys. bones and things to see what the outcomes could look like. Um, and so they do this until he has 100 in the hand and then Crazy Horse and his band did proceed to take out an entire battalion of the 7th Cavalry. Mm. Yes. Wow. It's it's very unique. I mean, the music just grabs you. You know, we were all goofing off Thank before, you. and all of a sudden, it's hypnotized. Uh, the tone has changed <laughs> yeah, a little exactly. bit in the room. Yeah, I was like, holy shit. So, so you've been in a lot of bands, and then why are you in this band, and where'd you guys meet? Yeah, I've, I've, then, been, yeah. I've been in a, a few bands. I was in a band from when I was a teenager called Sons of an Illustrious Father, and a band called Oddkin. I toured with uh, Saul Williams, the rapper and poet, for a while. And, and yeah, so I've, I've, I've toured in a lot of bands, and I've played with a lot of musicians. It's something I've done um, since I was young. I, uh, music has always been like um, an interest of mine, but honestly, like this band is so important to me. Toke's expression and Where'd you guys meet? We met, I was involved. Um, I'm old friends and at one time was very uh, dire enemies with uh, other members of Toke's family. Um, uh, and um, now we're all friends again, which is the good news. Uh, but we met working on some, in, some issues surrounding indigenous sovereignty, which I grew up with like a lot of activists in my family and, uh, and was interested in um, Going out there and learning about what was going on specifically with. So you met her. Uh, met her in. Uh, in where was it? Not, not much. Where is it? South Dakota. Yeah, you met her in South. South oh, you guys met. And then where did you meet with Jay? Uh, Jay, I met through a friend of ours, a friend of all of ours, a mutual friend of all of ours, named Sean, and we met in L.A. Yeah, just I think first in L.A. And you just said, "Hey, you want to be in this band with us?" Uh, kind of, well, I think not it, initially. No, I think we just wanted to meet up and just talk. Just yeah. Like, we had Sean a lot of was like, "You guys are gonna love each yeah. other." Then we were like, "Yeah," and we met up. And then and I remember uh, Ezra texted me or something. It was like, "Oh, I'm passing through Vegas. Yeah. I'll be in Vegas tomorrow. That's where I yeah. live." Yeah. And then uh, literally, I think you stayed for like two weeks or something. Yeah. And I was like, you "Oh, I just vibed out." Yeah. And I was like, "I have a full recording studio. Yeah. You should come check it out." And, and you play drums and banjo. In the back? Uh, I, yeah, banjo is not <laughs> a usual part of the deal, but there banjo? will be a little miscellaneous banjo <laughs> playing. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's a surprise. It's not, <laughs> so it's like but what's crazy, yo, what's crazy is I, I Googled you guys last night, and there's no videos of your 100 in the hand band. I know, so we're, brand, we're brand spanking yeah. new. Brand spanking yeah, we're kind of loosely premiering here. Cool. We're awesome. So thank you for, yeah, yeah this is cool. Yeah, we're a premiere, like yeah. the old school days. All right, right, so let's talk about Jay and the Ghost Adventures. Yeah. So you started behind the scenes, so you're good at tech with oh, yeah. cameras, editing, and all of a sudden mm -hmm. you accidentally sl slipped in front of the camera and yeah. like, fuck, this guy's good on <laughs> yeah. camera too. I guess and so. And you're at the comedy store, yeah. and this is a clip right oh, from yeah. there. Let's check that out. That's pretty cool, right? That, that's for sure. And have you ha ever had experience here? I feel like the, the spirit of comedy and the comedians, that I definitely feel. They did so much in the basement and things like that. People say there's bodies down there still buried and all this kind of stuff. And then a comedy store comes in <laughs> and completely <laughs> is opposite. It's, it's like, like you got screams and <laughs> and now you got just laughs. <laughs> like that's just the, the so, two. Okay, so, so this was, so the late great Brody Stevens, can you put up yeah. a, a photo yes. of Brody? Yeah. 
Yeah, which here honestly, while we're there, we felt like he came through. There was even Jeff started kind of bugging out because he started talking about Brody and the lights mm. on the stage started flickering. Wow. And I think uh, we were talking to the lighting guy there, and he wasn't even up in the booth at the time, so there was no but no way that we could explain why. Right when he started talking about Brody, they just started flickering on and off, mm. which is pretty can wild. Can we mention we Jeff it. Scott for a second? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's a legend. Yeah, we interviewed Jeff Scott in there, too. Jeez. I, from an outsider's perspective who has been performing there since 1990, mm. you know the history, but even before it was Ciro's. Mm. And so I feel like, what was it before Ciro's? Do you know? Uh, I don't know. I think our, our research, we just started with Ciro's. So Vegas, do you like living in Vegas? Oh, I love it. I mean, this time of year is a little rough yeah, when it's so like 120 degrees out there. But So what do you do out there? No. Uh, so we still, we're still filming the show. We literally film the show every other week. Uh, I've been with the show f almost 15 years Fuck. now. Uh, season 28 just started airing on Discovery Channel. Uh, and we literally have been filming every other week for the last 15 years. Sick. We haven't stopped. So, Paulie, he's a legend. He's been doing this for 15 years. Uh, recently, I got in the game a tiny bit. Uh, I did Jack Osborne show oh, yeah. mm. with Jay Muse. And mm. so me, Jay, and Jack went out and did two adventures. One, okay. we went to Utah, uh -huh. uh, Utah Basin, which they say is the most paranormal place possibly on Earth. And then, uh, and we did it with a lot of indigenous people, and we had amazing things happen. And then we went to a a, a, a place in the outside of Illinois, which was a uh, home for, it was a high, crazy. Uh, how can I say? It? I don't know what the word is. A mental, mental institution. Mental institution, and that was ghost. So. Yeah. There's a lot going on in this whole oh, yeah. stuff, I and mean, I think it's more and more getting exposed. Do you oh, agree? Oh, absolutely. And I think too, like a lot of people, you know, you go back 20 years, you'd be crazy for talking about this. If you had a ghost in your house, yeah. someone you'd be like, oh, Nicole, you have ghosts in your house. Asians are scared of ghosts, man. When yeah. we buy a house, we ask, did anybody die in here? If that house had ghosts, we want to know yeah. that ghost had ran control. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so I know a lot of people are, are at home watching right now. Thank you for watching. <laughs> and I know they're looking at this gentleman right here. You're also a big actor. So besides yeah. that, so you're kind of like Keanu Reeves, bro. Where like you're in a band and you're acting and all that shit. Let's not be shy. You're in a big movie, The Flash. Can we put that up there? Right? I humbled in the presence Dude, of actors yeah, I greatly no, admire. That's great. all you know. This is you. This is a big deal. I mean, when I told people Michael that Keaton. you're coming, yo, Ezra. <laughs> that was when I told Keaton. people, when I told him. That you're coming. I asked him if you ever heard about it. He's like, yeah. And I'm like, dude, he's here. He's like, he's fucking here. Oh, like, yeah, he's that into it, bro. I'm a huge fan of yours as dude, well, honestly. Yeah. Back at fan. you, dude. He's, yeah. You've done a lot of big movies. And it's incredible. So well, thank you, bro. You know They're what I think? Huge to me, obviously. Uh, you know, yeah, I think he needs to come. Both of you, honestly, I'm a huge. I it's think, a huge honor for us all to be here. I think, right? listen, it's important. I think you need to Maybe come to watch. Raleigh, North Carolina with us and sit with us at, next, at the Comic-Con. Sit with us next. <laughs> the well, Comic -Con, if there's somewhere bro, we can play a show send, and if there's the somewhere way. haunted... Dude, you put, we can all, you, would you know, kill. if there's a sperm donation center there, and <laughs> if we can all just pull this all together. Right. Are you not, do you not have a con? Do you never go to cons? I, I do go to cons. Okay. Yeah, yeah I haven't been in a while, but I love, I, so I actually love Comic-Cons. You know yeah. And you I agree with you, and I've also seen Jeremy Renner at a Comic-Con, and he is the trailblazer. Well, he is. <laughs> yeah, he is. So how'd you, so let's talk about your acting. So you're from Jersey, you're Jewish, you're acting. You all had true, a speech all impediment. true, all true, you all true. Impediment. Amazing, thank like you for. Yeah, you learned opera and shit. Like, you what know the fuck so much. Happened? What the fuck happened, bro? Uh, yeah, seriously, right? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> like, you know, it's cool. Yeah, um, I, I did have a speech impediment when I was a kid. I had a bad stutter, uh, which only comes back when I talk about it. So bear with me. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, and really was, I, my parents put me in speech therapy. I didn't want to be in speech therapy. I found it really, really difficult, and it made me feel bad about what was wrong with me. I, I was like five, you know, mm. um, struggling. Like for like, I went to, you know, kindergarten. Like kids can be mean and stuff, and I was getting bullied. I was trying to talk, and you know, you're trying to hit them back with a, you know, you're trying to diss back, and you can't even speak. It's difficult. Um, and then I had a music teacher. I got really. So I formed this very intense connection with art because when I started singing, it cured my stutter. Wow. So it was like, oh, I started great. doing making art, taught me how to speak. It is awesome. It also makes you really fucked up because you're like, you know, I have a deep, uh, deep connection with the, with the expression that is almost codependent, which mm. is shit, you know, I've been trying to 
f figure out. And then you <laughs> and then you dropped out of high school and you got straight into acting. Is this you right here? Uh, that's me and Johnny Simmons in wow. The Perks of Being a Wallflower, Wallflower and we we're both, yeah. yeah. And so Sick. many amazing actors in this movie who have gone on to do all sorts of amazing work. Um, sort of kindred to movies that y'all were in where it's like these su these super cast of people who you then see later, later on. Johnny Simmons is an incredible actor. Wow. He's really... I, um, I look at you as... You know, I know you're an actor, mm. and I also know you're a musician. I look at you as an artist, mm. and I hate it when people say, oh, do you like this or this better? But, you know, you just express yourself how you feel, right? Uh, I, that's really sweet. I, I do. Well, I, I mean, Paulie. <laughs> I think of you as an artist, too, honestly. Yeah. I think comedy is the hardest thing in the, in the whole, like, myriad of the arts. I feel like comedy is the hardest well, thing yeah. in the world. Well, and I feel like what y'all do is, for me, is like the pinnacle so anyway. but well thank you but like i was saying i'm looking at you and i really do i you probably it, paint yeah, like yeah. paulie does mm -hmm. they, they could say you're just he's not just a comedian he's an actor i go to the korean writer. spa you go to the korean spa yeah. <laughs> so back to back to hundred in the hand so what's your vision for yourself where are you going are you gonna hit the road are you gonna stay put yeah you guys are all probably busy he, He's in uh, Vegas. Everyone's yeah. traveling. Jay, Jay will leave us in the studio and go to investigate some ghosts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He'll come back a little shaken, yeah. shake it off, and we'll make and what's some the music. Name your, what's the name of your new album? Uh, we don't have a, a record announced or so you, forthcoming. Yeah. But, but you we have really some just started. We put play. out we put out songs. We've Can recorded we a ton of stuff, so we're just kind of like dropping it as we go. Mm -hmm. Uh, we got like 30 tracks to put out. They are like bang. Can you play 30 songs today? We can play 30 songs in a row. If but the interpretive of dancing yeah. is strong enough, we but will keep playing. Yeah. He, he gets 30 songs, but we're like, Jamie, we have a time limit. <laughs> I, well, he's a fucking genius, this guy. You I know, know what I mean? I mean, come you, on. This yeah, is some real true, shit. You this are, is dude. like some Johnny Depp, like, no, you know. No, you are. That's what I'm saying. He's, you know, he's, a, he's another level. Here, I right? could see you blow up as a rock star for sure. Yeah, but we need him at our Comic-Con in Raleigh this next month. I think that's... All right, you guys. Guys, we're gonna we're gonna listen to some music, so don't go anywhere. Oh, yeah. Under in the hand, here we go, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, hundred in the hands. Thank you.
gate. 